Let's get started creating a first Rails application. So we're going to clone this URL. Open up the terminal, git clone, and then the address right here. This is just to get the starter project. It's basically a beginning Rails project, but it has a couple of things set up for us. OK. So now if we click, we see it just created a folder automated store. We're going to navigate into that. And here is. Um, all the files in a Rails application. So now let's move the terminal to the side and go to the Getting Started tutorial. So we can see what to do next. So, first thing it says to do is bundle install. So let's type that in. This is going to install all the gems in the Rails application. Gems are Ruby that comes with that. Okay, so that was quick. Now for the next part, This code is what we need next. So we're just going to copy it for now. This is to generate the model. OK, so it looks like there's some issue with the gem. So we're going to actually make an adjustment to um, this gem. We're going to do bundle update spring. And hopefully this should fix the issue. There's an issue with um, the gem that we already had in our system and the gem for the application. OK. Now let's just run bundle again, make sure everything works. It looks like everything works this time. So now I'm going to recopy in the code to generate the model. This is going to create the product model. Hopefully this time it will work. OK, and that looks like it worked. So we're soon going to look at that code. But for now, let's just run the database migration. OK, and that all worked. So now we actually have our basic app set up. So now we're going to run our first test. OK, so this is what happened. It ran the first test correctly. And then the next test, which is for code we didn't yet get up to, we created an error. So we're able to see we got the first step. We can now go on to the next step. OK, so we'll go on to the next page. OK, so this is to play around with the products Rails console. We could actually just type in Rails C for sure. OK, as you can see here, we're able to create actual products. OK, and that created an actual product, a cow. Um, OK, so you could continue trying out different things, create, read, update, delete. You're able to do that all from the console, and later you're able to use this actual code in your application. Now let's create a new model. So this is the Rails console. If you wanted to keep it open, you could create a new tab. For now, we're just going to quit it. OK, so the next console we're going to create, next model we're going to create is category. And we'll run the migration to actually set that up in the database. Now we realize we want products to belong to category. To do this, we need to add a column to products to show what category they belong to. So there's going to be, on each product, there's going to be an ID of a category. And this ID will, will say, what category does this product belong to? So to add that, we need to create another migration. This is going to add the category column to the product. OK, and again, when rakeDB migrate to run this migration file. OK, now it's all set up. We're going to create a new tab here to start the Rails console. Now let's get the first product. It doesn't have a category. We're going to change it. Now it has a category ID. So if we type in prod and category, an error. Why does it have an error? Because even though the database, there is a column identifying it. 
there's nothing in Ruby and Rails that tells us about this relationship between product and category. So now we're going to go ahead and change that. So we're going to actually do the editing now in RubyMine. Okay, so we're going to open up our files now in RubyMine. Um, to do this, there's a way you could do it from the command line. You could also just go to RubyMine, navigate to your folder where the project is, and open it up. So once that's all done, you have it all open. There are going to be some messages connecting to the database, different things. You could do those, but we're just going to focus now on getting the um, product model connected to the category model. So command shift n lets you open up a file. We're going to open up the product file. Now that the product file is open, it belongs to category. This lets us um, associate a product with a category. Now we're going to test out a console. You could go back to your terminal over here, where you had your console running, or we're just going to close it. We're going to try out the RubyMine console. So go to Tools, Run Rails Console. Okay, so this is going to fire up the Rails console. Um, and it just, RubyMine provides a little bit of a more user friendly console, so it's a little bit easier to do things in it. So now that it's loading, do product dot first. Let's just assign that to product then. And we see here it returns the product. Now we're going to do product dot category and it returns nil. Why does it return nil? Because there are no categories. If we do category.create name animals. Now that category has the ID one, our product has the ID one. So if we go back and do product.category, it's again nil. Why is it nil again? because it hasn't been reloaded from the database and it remembers that it's null from before. So we're going to go back, press up, go back, product equals product dot first, and now we do product dot category, and boom, it returns our category. Now if we do category dot product, so let's get the first category. Now category dot product, that returns um, nothing because we didn't associate a category with products. So we're going to go and change this in the code. So command shift category has many products. Now we have to reload so that it reloads the Rails environment. Now go and get the category again. Category dot products and boom, we have a collection with a product in it. So that's all great. And um, we're now just going to go and run Rails rake test again to see if we pass an additional test. OK, and we see here that indeed we now are product created in the end price, product in blown category, category is made products. And this next thing is what we're going to be up to next. Should not say product without name. That's what we're going to work on next. OK, so now we're going to go on two validations. This is to prevent products from being created when they don't have valid data. So if we go back to the Rails console, let's say we create product.create. This will create a product even though it has no data in it and so it really should not be saved into the database without any valid data. Let's destroy the product because it has no valid data. Okay, now let's go ahead and create the validations. So the first thing we're going to do is validate the name. Go back to product validates name. We're also going to validate the price. Now if we go ahead and create a product, well first make sure to reload. And now we will see rollback transaction. The product cannot be created. If we want to see an error message, at an exclamation point. And this will show you why it couldn't create the product. Active record 
validation field, name can't be blank and price can't be blank. And that can be useful information in many cases. Now we will add a more advanced validation for the price. And this will check if the price is greater than or equal to zero. We can now go ahead and run the test. Whoops, that's the wrong code. Make test. And we see now that all the tests from 1 through 6b have run correctly. OK, now let's add some methods to our model. So first we're going to, we want to add a quantity column to products. So to do this, generate a migration to add quantity to products. And then run rake tv migrate to apply the changes to the database. Now we're going to create the actual methods. So we're going to skip to creating the more advanced version of the method. Which is over here. So go back to the product model, create a new method purchase. Make sure you get in all the letters. This will let us purchase products. Okay, and we could remove these comments. Now we're going to create new methods for available. This is a class method and newest. Okay, now let's go ahead and run the test to see what we're up to. Okay, and it now passed all through test 12, but it doesn't pass the method oldest returns oldest product, and it actually says there's no method oldest. So if we look now at the challenges, we see create a class method oldest, I'll turn the product with the oldest created at time. So we could go ahead and do that. And we could just modify instead of doing by created at that last, do that first. And this will return the oldest uh, product in the database. So now if we run rig test again, this time it should pass that test. And indeed, it passed that test, and it only for the next set of tests on the controller test doesn't mess up. So we've really finished all the tests on the product model. We could do some additional practice on the next page. Um, you could also do the optional challenge, and then practice the store, and then you could check out the model reference. But overall, we're actually ready to go on to the next tutorial to create an actual full Rails website.